In this presentation, we will set up service items, service items that can help to create invoices and sales receipts in QuickBooks Pro 2020, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitar example file. I'm going to go ahead and go to the View tab up top, and I'm going to go to the Open Windows List because I like to have this Open Windows List on the side. Again, that's at the View tab, the Open Windows List. The only thing we have open is, of course, the home page at this time. We're going to set up service items now. So we need to get an idea first, of course, what is a service item. If you're going to create a invoice or a sales receipt you will typically need the service items as we open up the invoice for example and this would be an invoice would be kind of like a bill of course to the customers something that we would provide to the customers and expect payment at some point in the future we go down to the actual items that we will be charging for and you'll see this items tabs so the types of items that we can include then might be something that related to inventory if we sell inventory or if we have some type of services, we do services for them, then we might have a service item that we would include here. Now, if we don't have any items set up, you might just say, oh, what if I don't have, I don't want to deal with items. You could just say, all right, we'll just put the description of what you did, put the rate right here, and then it'll calculate the amount for us. And you could simply do that as we go through. However, if you want it to be easier or standardized, especially if you want somebody else to go through it and be able to work through this item, It'd be very nice to have those service items that would be set up so that the invoice can then populate itself automatically by simply selecting the proper service item for it to do so. So we really want to basically set up those service items. Also note that you can set up service items here within this window by adding a new service item and we will do this in future presentations. But for now, we would like to bulk add all the service items that we think are going to be relevant. So we're going to go to a different section to do this. I'm going to close this window by hitting the X up top, not the big X in blue, but the X in gray. So I'm going to close this out. We're back to our home tab. That's the only window that we have open. Now we want to go to the lists. So this is going to be a type of lists. The items are going to be a type of list. So we go to the lists drop down and we want to go to the item list. So we want the item list, selecting the item list. We only have two that are in our default settings. These default settings from when we set up the software and decided what industry we are in. We have the sales tax and uh, non-taxable and taxable with relation to the sales tax. Now we're going to be thinking about those types of things that we do for clients related to guitars in our case and set up the items related to them. For example, if we did some type of diagnostic, we're going to call it a service on the guitar, then we could add a service item related to that service for it and standardize the service item. We could do that by going to the items drop down. It's kind of funny that it's a drop up, you know, it's got a drop down arrow way down at the bottom here. But obviously, if you hit the screen, it'll go up. So it's a drop up here or a rise up kind of icon. And then we would go to add a new item. So we'd go to uh, new and then we could select the item. And then within this screen, we could select what type of item we want. In our case, service versus inventory is the main kind of items we would have. We're here concentrating in on the service item. We could then add the name of the item. And if it's a sub item, we can go here. We can then add the description. We're going to need the rate. And then we're going to select the account that it would go to. If it's a service item, you would think it would be some type of income type of account. So if we were to do it one by one, that's one way we could do it. In this case, we're going to say, hey, we got a few service items we would like to do. Is there a faster input screen for us to do this? And there is a, a different screen we can use. So I'm going to close this out now. That's how we would do it if there's one at a time, not the, not the X up top, but the little gray X. And that'll take us to the two open windows, the items and the home tab. We're going to go back down to the drop up or the drop down with the rise up, drop down, rise up thing. And we're going to select then the edit, uh, add, edit multiple items. So instead of just the new item, we're going to add, edit multiple items. And we will then come to this screen. Now this screen can look a little bit intimidating because there's a lot more fields going on here. But in essence, we have the same type of input screens now in a spreadsheet type format so that we can enter this stuff uh, a lot more quickly as we enter the data. So we've got the item name, uh, the sub, the sales price, and the income account. So we're going to do a little bit of, just of adjusting to this format. Note up top, we have the lists, this being a service item. 
uh, that we have up top as opposed to the inventory item. So we're in the service item section. Later, we'll talk about the inventory items, which are a little bit more complicated. That's when we actually sell inventory as, as opposed to doing a service and therefore have to deal with cost of goods sold and the inventory accounts. Next thing we're going to want to do is adjust. We're going to adjust these screens so that uh, we could see how they are adjusted. And this can help us with the input process. So to do that, we're going to go to the customized columns up top, customized columns at the top right. And we'll see we'll have two columns. This is a kind of common setup for QuickBooks. They'll have a few different things that we'll see with a similar type of setup. It's a little bit confusing because over here we're talking about, of course, columns. And over here, we, we see them in an up and down type format as opposed to a column format. But our goal, as you can see here, the format of the chosen columns is uh, up and down and left to right. So item is on the left. It's on the top here. Then uh, the sub items second. It's second here on uh, below here and then the sales and so on. What we have over here is the available items that we could add. So we could add some more items and have more detail with the items. We only want the number of columns that we need in order for us to, to uh, use and populate what we need. So to add something, we would put our cursor here. Uh, if I wanted to add the cost, I would go on it and then say add. If I want to uh, make it go up in the, in the rows to have it on top, for example, we could say move up until it's on top. And then when we hit enter, the cost would be the first thing in the data input screen. I'm gonna, if I want to remove it, then I put my cursor on this one and we remove it. So I'm going to remove it here. So that's kind of the concept that we're going to have. Now we're going to start off. We're going to say we want the uh, item name first. Then we want to have a sales description. It's not here. Therefore, the sales description is down here. We're going to add it. We're going to put our cursor on sales description and add. And then I'm going to move it up to the second item. So I'm going to move up, move up, move up. So now we have the item name and the sales description. So that means it's going to be item name and then sales description once we select OK at the end of this process. Then we want the purchase description. So I want a purchase description. That's this one. It's also not there. Therefore, we're going to add it. Then we're going to move it up. So I'm going to move it up right out under the sales description. Next, I want the sales price. It's already here, but I want it to be next in line. So I'm going to put my cursor on the sales price and say up, move up one, please. And then we, we want the income account. So income account, I would like to move that up. So I'm going to move that up to the income account. And then we want the sales tax. We would like the sales tax code. Actually, that's not correct. There is no sales tax. What we want to do is remove this one. I'm not going to have the sub item. So I'm going to put our cursor on the sub item and remove that. Okay, so here's the order top to bottom. That should then be the order left to right. Once we select OK, let's see if that is indeed the case. I'm going to select OK. And there we have it. Now, note uh, you can adjust the size of these screens a little bit as well. So if the default that it just popped in here isn't quite right, and you want to make this one, say, a little smaller, and this one a little wider, it's just like Excel. You put your cursor right between on those three dots, and that allows you to adjust the size of the column. If you have a lot of columns, then you'd have to scroll to the right we will see that next time when we look at the inventory items. We don't need as many columns with regards to the service items. Now, I apologize up front for the names of some of these service items. I actually kind of mingled together the guitar shop we're putting together here and basically an auto shop. So these might sound kind of like auto diagnostics for, for the good. So bear with us with the types of items that we're going to be doing for the service for our uh, guitars on them. Our goal is just to get a feel, feel of different kind of settings on how we can get these uh, service items in place and how they will then be populating the invoices and sales receipts for us. So we're going to start off with a diagnostic. So here's the diagnostic. It's going to be the same for the sales description. So it's a diagnostic of a guitar, which I'm, you know, I'm not sure exactly how you do that, but that's okay. We're going to give, we're going to check it out and it's going to be the price is going to be 68. It's going to be a uh, type of account. Now, when we think about the accounts that we're going to have here, here's the drop down of the accounts. That was in the chart of accounts. Now, it's in order, again, uh, by the, the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. We would think, of course, that this being something on the invoice, something that we do, we're doing a diagnostic and therefore will be paid for it. It should be an income type of account. If I look at the income accounts down here, though, I only have the merchandise sales and the sales discount. 
this isn't a merchandise. We're not selling inventory. That wouldn't be a proper account. Therefore, we need to set up another account. We can do that right here. I could just add another account right here. There's two ways we can do it. We can go up top and we can go to add new. I like to actually just type in the account. That's a double check to see that it's not there because as we type, we'll see that it'll start to pop up, right? The, see all the drop down starts to pop up and says, hey, we got this account that, add, that has those letters in it. And we say, no, that's not it. I'm just going to keep typing and then it, that'll disappear. Well, well, it didn't because service is in there, but we want one to just call it service because it's going to be a service and it's going to be an income type of account. So I'm just going to say service. I'm going to say tab. It's going to hey, hey, say, hey, uh, service is not an account list. Do you want to add it? Do you want to set it up? Yes, we do. We're going to set that one up and it's going to be an income type of account. We're going to call it service. So the important thing, it's an income type of account as opposed to these other type of accounts. It's going to be a service. There's nothing else we need at this time. We, we will add more accounts later. So you'll see this account adding process uh, as we go through as needed. We'll add more accounts. And then we're going to say save and close. There it is. Next one, we're going to call it an hourly service. And now you can imagine when we think of a diagnostic and we do service, I'm thinking of something that we're going to say, hey, it's a diagnostic. I'm not going to charge you by the hour. I'm just going to charge you a flat service fee. It's a diagnostic service that costs you $68, right? For however many diagnostics we do, as opposed to another type of service type system you might have, which is like, this is my hourly service. I worked on your guitar. I did, you know, put the strings on the thing and tuned it and, you know, tested different kind of things on it for this many time frames. And therefore, we'll put the rate on there and then the hours on the invoice or the sales receipt. So this one's going to be for 140 and it's going to be a service also. And then the next one we're going to have partial service. And, and I'm not, I apologize for that name. It's not the best name here, <laughs> but we're going to have that because we want to add a few more of these items. That's going to be for 100 and that's going to be also a service it's going to the service account the income account for service and the last one we're going to just call a tune up we're going to tune up the guitar meaning we're going to make it sound right and then uh, we're going to call it uh, we'll call it a five guitar tune up so it's, we have a five guitar tune up service and that's 200 for the tune up process and that's going to go to service so that's going to be the concept of the service these are things that don't have inventory they're going to be the service items. We're not going to have to deal with cost of goods sold or inventory. We could set them up as basically a fixed type of fee. We're going to say, hey, whatever you know the diagnostic is, it is what it is. I'm not going to you know count the hours. I'm just going to say it's a diagnostic. That's how much it, it costs. If you do an oil change or something like that, that would be the same kind of system. If you go to something other system, you might say, hey, I like bookkeeping or something. I did bookkeeping. It costs this much an hour. This is how many hours that were there. You might have different people that do different bookkeeping and you might even charge different rates depending on that kind of system. But so those are the two kind of ways you can think about the, basically the service items. Typically, you can fill them out and input them in this format. And then we're going to basically go down to the bottom and say save changes. So I'm going to save the changes and then the uh, four service item records have been saved. So we're going to say OK. That's great. I'm going to close this window. You can close it down below. I used to, t I used to, I usually use this Xbox up top. Now no, don't get, don't hit this one up top. Get used to just using this one down below. You'll close the whole program and you'll go, ah, and I have to open it back up, which takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to close this one. And then you'll see now in this screen, which was the items screen, which you'll recall, you go to the lists up top and we want the item list. Now that's what we're in at this point before all it had with the sales tax items and now it has our service items diagnostic hourly service partial service tune up what can we do with these well let's go to the home page and see what we can do with these items if we go then to the home page these are the things that are going to be used and will show up when we create something such a as a uh, invoice or a sales receipt if i create an invoice now at this point then uh, I can go down here. I could, you know, bill someone, a client that we have. We'd have to add a client. But the item then is going to be one of these items. We're going to say, hey, we did a diagnostic for you. And there it is. And then, you know, this one we're charging one diagnostic. It costs $68. As opposed to, we also did some hourly service for you. And let's say we spent two hours on hourly service stuff. It costs 140 an hour. 
that's the 240 there. And then of course it would add up to the total. So these are the things that are going to help us. If we're doing our own systematic invoicing, really helps to save time in the inventory process or the invoicing process. If you have this all set up, not the inventory process, this is not inventory because we're doing the service items, but this really saves time because you want to standardize things. You want to be able to explain to someone, hey, look, you know, this is what it costs. I either, I either charge you for the upfront fee for whatever it is I am doing or some type of hourly rate. And it will be a systematic process that you can then set up within the QuickBooks file and, and be very systematic about it. So, so you can concentrate on, you know, whatever the task is that you are doing. So, and we can then close this. I'm going to close this. Do not save it because we're not going to save this item. I'm just going to close it. This is just an example. You have not recorded the new transaction. Do you want to record it now? No, we don't. We're just looking. And then you could do the same thing, of course, with the sales receipt. So if you wanted to create the sales receipt, this would be when we, you got paid at the same point in time that you are creating the sales receipt. Same kind of drop down items. You can have a tune up that we would have the tune up the five guitar tune up. We had one of those. And then if we're going to tune up stuff, it's a five guitar tune up minimum. And then the partial service or something like that. Right. And you could you could do the same type of process with the sales receipt. So then I'm going to close this out. Once again, don't save it. We're going to close this out and say you have not recorded this transaction. Actually, before we before we do that, I'm going to cancel this. Just note that if you record this, then what's going to be the journal entry related to it? We've discussed this in prior presentations, but just to note this, you look at this form. This is what's driving the transaction. This one means we got the payment at this point in time. If we got the cash, then it's going to go into cash or, or undeposited funds, the debit or increase to cash. The other side is going to go to revenue, right? The income type of account, the one we set up as we entered this thing, we, we set up the new account called service item. And that's what that's going to be the accounts that will be going up. I'm going to close this back out and we'll say, no, don't save that one. And let's check out one other thing we put in these lists up, of, up above. Or you can go you can go to the chart of accounts in the home page. I like going to the lists to do the chart of accounts for some reason. It's just a habit. You can also hit control A. I, I don't do that either, but that would be even more dorky and that would be good. That's the goal here on the to learn the QuickBooks stuff. And so then if you go here, then note we set up the new account, which is going to be the service item. The service item, the inventory item here. This is the new income type item a revenue type of account remember whenever you go here you want to mem you just want to remember that it's going to be an order by account type so you want to order it and think about the order with an account type you can't possibly change the order into search for something but you want to think of it in order of the account type that's the order of the financial statements the balance sheet the income statement assets liabilities equity income and expenses